So welcome to our next AppSim training module. I'm Keith Pendleton from the University of Southern Queensland and I'm also a member of the AppSim reference panel. In this module, we're going to um, start exploring some of the irrigation options within AppSim. So let's get started with that now. We'll just get rid of this picture of me so we can fully see the screen. Okay, so we're gonna start a, a new simulation. So launch AppSim will load with most previously saved um, simulation that you ran. Um, in my case, it is the climate um, change scenario that we ran in last in the last training module. Um, we're gonna start a new one, so click new and scroll down to continuous wheat. We're gonna use the continuous wheat simulation as a baseline to start exploring some of the irrigation options. Okay, we wanna change the start date in this simulation to the 1st of January 1950 and leave the end date as the 31st of December 1950. So we're just gonna run a simulation of one year in this case. Hit save and then we'll save this as, or we'll call it irrigation. Um, very inventive name considering we're doing um, irrigation simulations. Next thing we wanna do is expand out the soil node in our paddock and click on the initial water node and change the initial water content to 50% full and have it evenly distri distributed across the soil profile. We want to change our outputs um, so just click on the variable node and make sure we got ESW remember that stands for extractable soil water um, as, a, as an output in our list of outputs, and but change the reporting frequency from harvesting to um, reporting at the end of each day. So to do that, just select harvesting, hit delete on your keyboard. So we're gonna, there should be nothing in our reporting frequency list. And then under the component filter, under clock, you'll find an end of day option. So double click on that and that'll bring it across into our um, output file frequency list. Now we're gonna add a, um, our irrigation component in. So we'll find the irrigation component under the standard toolbox. I'll just expand this out so we can see a bit better. Under the standard toolbox, there's a, a folder called water components. And we've got a number of different water components there. We just wanna grab the irrigation one. Make sure you take irrigation, not irrigation megalitre allocation. So click on that, drag it up and place it into the paddock. We go and it's there now click on it it brings up an interface okay and it's this is the automatic irrigation interface um, but because we're going to um, use some manager components to interact with irrigation and to control the irrigation event we want to turn this off so select um, for automatic irrigation just click on the option there that is on and change it to off okay so now we've got the irrigation component this component acts very similar to say the fertilizer component in the in the paddock um, that's already there um, because we're this crop under the manager folder here is applying fertilizer so we've got a fertilizer component we're going to add some irrigation managers as well so we'll need the irrigation component to be called on to actually apply apply our irrigation water for us now we're going to um, now we turn that automatic irrigation off we're going to rename this simulation so right click on continuous wheat go rename and we're going to call it no irrigation And click OK. So we've got a no irrigation option here. We've turned up our irrigation, our automatic irrigation in the irrigation component, and we don't have any irrigation options in the manager folder. And we're going to create a duplicate of this node, a linked duplicate in this case. So right click on the no irrigation simulation, select duplicate this node, create one duplicate, make sure you've got linked ticked, and go OK. And now we've got a simulation which is linked to our original simulation. We're gonna rename that simula simulation to irrigate on date. And in this simulation, we're gonna explore how the irrigation on a fixed date options work. So if we expand out our irrigate on date simulation, expand the paddock out right till we get to the manager folder. And then under the management toolbox, we will find 
our irrigation managers under the manager.net common tasks folder. So expand that one out and scroll down if you need to, you'll find a number of irrigation options there. So irrigation on soil water deficit, irrigation on event, irrigation on date, and a number of others as well. We're going to, we're actually going to explore a couple of these um, in this exercise, the first one being irrigate on date. So click on the irrigate on date manager and drag it up and place it into the manager folder. We'll close off our toolbox, we don't need it now. Click on the irrigate on date manager and we want to change our irrigation date. So we can actually create a list here of different irrigation dates. We've already got two entered in there. Um, but we don't want to irrigate exactly on those days. We want to irrigate on the 1st of May and the 1st of August. Okay, and we could add another one in if we wanted to. We could add in irrigate on the, the 1st of, of September as well if we so wanted to, but two will be enough just to demonstrate how this manager works. Click Save, select the Simulations folder, and select Run or hit Run in our top toolbar. Now, simulations now have completed. Now we're going to want to. Um, we could look at our output files and try to compare between the extractable soil water under both simulations, but that would become a little bit tedious and, and quite difficult considering there's quite a bit of data there. So we want to um, create a graph to visualize it. So under the graphs toolbox, bring in an XY graph and place them in the simulations folder. And expand that out till we get to the apps in file reader. Click browse and select our two um, output files that we just generated. So one was no irrigation dot out and the other one was irrigate on date dot out. Remember to hold down the control key to select multiple output files at once. Under the plot node, we want to plot date as our X variable. So select the X variables box, make sure it's pink, then click date from the header in the table, then select the Y variables box, and we're going to plot ESW or extractable soil water. And just change the point height to none. That way um, our graph will look a little bit cleaner. And then click on XY to see or to visualize our results and we can see here that our simulation tracks on quite nicely and then our irrigate on date when it gets to the first of may puts on 50 mils of water okay and our second date was the first of august and again we had another irrigation application there so irrigate on date works as it says it applies water on the date specified so but there's a couple of other irrigation managers we're going to um, explore as well so let's create another duplicate of our no irrigation simulation. So right click on it, select duplicate this node, create one duplicate, make sure you've got linked, um, we want it linked, so click, click the linked duplicates um, checkbox and go OK. And we're going to rename this one to irrigate on event. The natural particular event we're going to irrigate on is sowing. So let's expand out our irrigated event sim simulation till we get to the manager folder. Um, and we need to bring our uh, irrigation manager in. So again, we'll find it under the manager toolbox, under manager.net common tasks folder, and there will be a irrigate on event manager. Click on it, drag it, and place it up into the manager folder. If we click on that irrigate on event manager, it brings up an interface as well. So we want to, we're, we're planting wheat, so leave the module the event should come from as wheat, and we want to do it at sowing, so leave that as sowing, and we're going to apply 50 mils. So there shouldn't be anything to change in this, in this interface here. So let's just hit save, select the simulations folder, and click run and we'll see how this irrigation manager works. Let's run now to visualize that result in 
um, along with the previous two simulations results. Um, go to the XY graph, expand out till we get to the AppSim file reader. Click on browse and we want to bring in no irrigation, irrigation, irrigate on event and irrigate on date. And we'll be able to compare the three together. Okay, click on plot, make sure we've just got date under the X variables and extractable soil water under the Y variables and click on the graph and we'll have to just check the box there to turn on their irrigate on event option. And you'll see here at sowing, um, so it happens sometime between, well, it looks like it happens about um, fairly early in June in this case, we're getting 50 mils of, of irrigation water applied and no other irrigation event occurring at all. So that's how our irrigation on event um, manager works. And so it's very handy for situations where irrigation is only applied at sowing. Now there's another, another irrigation manager we're going to um, just have a quick look at, um, and that's the irrigate based on rainfall manager. So again, we're going to create another duplicate of our base simulation. So right click on it, go to duplicate this node, create a link duplicate, we just want to create one and go OK. We'll rename this one to Irrigate Based on Rainfall. Go OK. Expand that, our new simulation out till we get to the Manager folder. And then we're going to pull in a manager called Irrigate Based on Rainfall from the Manager Toolbox under the Manager.net Common Tasks folder. And there's one there called Irrigate on, based on rainfall. Click on it, drag it up and place it into the manager folder. So this manager here has, um, we've got a number of options there. So we can tell it the number of days to, um, to look back at the rainfall on and say, so currently it's set to seven. Um, and if that, if that rainfall over the past seven days is less than 10, it will apply five millimetres of rain with an irrigation efficiency of one, which means it's all the water applied makes it to the soil. Um, but it also it won't attempt to also apply irrigation um, until seven days has passed since the last irrigation event as well. So that's a really handy check to stop um, irrigation managers, um, in this, particularly this one, from going silly and applying um, irrigation water really frequent um, every day, uh, which wouldn't happen um, in reality. Usually it would be a week or five days or even a fortnight before a farmer might return to their field to re-irrigate depending on their, on their scheduling. So, and then the other option we've got is an irrigation window here. So don't apply irrigation between, or apply irrigation between these two dates. And currently it's set to the full year. But we don't want, in this case, we don't want to apply any irrigation prior to when we would have sown the crop. So let's go back to our crop management manager and just look at what our sowing dates are. And here our sowing window ranges between the 15th of May and the 10th of, June, of July. So let's go back to our irrigation manager and we'll change our earliest irrigation to the 15th of May. Okay, make sure that you put the date format exactly as I've got it um, keep, because you've got to keep in mind AppSim is really picky about the format that we feed dates to it. Click Save. We'll run that simulation. We'll see what its results look like. Okay, we'll just visualise it with our plot. So we'll go to the AppSim file reader. In this case, we want to select, again, all the simulations are done so far. So our no irrigation.out file, irrigation on event, irrigation on date, and irrigation based on rainfall. Um, open them up. Click on XY. Turn on the irrigate based on rainfall. And here we go. So we've got, notice we specified we, couldn't, we wouldn't start irrigating until after... Um, until after the, we wouldn't start irrigating until after, after the 15th of May, so we don't see any irrigation applied 
or no, no change in our extractable soil water, but um, away from the baseline until that date. And then you see here we've got um, the water, extractable soil water just being kept above what it is in the baseline simulation, right through the simulation, um, because we're frequently applying small amounts of water in the, with that manager based on rainfall. The final irrigation manager we're going to um, have a quick look at is the irrigation based on soil water deficit. So again, make another duplicate of our original simulation. So right click on an irrigation simulation, select duplicate this node. We want to create one linked duplicate. And we're going to rename this one to irrigate based on SW deficit. Expand it out until we get to the manager folder. Go to our manager toolbox and find our irrigate on soil water deficit manager. Click on it, drag it up and place it into the manager folder. Okay. So we're going to leave this one um, pretty much as it is, although we'll, we'll change our irrigation window. But we're going, this one says we're going to irrigate on a soil water deficit of 10 millimetres, an irrigation efficiency of, of one. Um, but we're going to change our our um, earliest date that irrigation could be applied to the 15th of May because that's the earliest that we could sow our crop based on our crop manager. And if we we can actually specify the depth um, or the soil layers that this, this depth is calculated over, um, but we leave it, that if you want to do it over the entire soil profile, we leave it as zero, which we will do in this case, and then we can also tell how much water we want to apply um, so that we could actually specify a value there. If we leave it at zero, it will apply whatever the soil water deficit is at the time um, of application. So we'll leave it at zero in this case as well. Now, if we go back to our initial water node in our soil for this particular simulation, um, you'd actually notice that we've already got quite a significant soil water deficit. So there would be a lot of irrigation applied at the start of the simulation. Um, which might make our um, might mask some of the 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 graph and and how it looks in our graph. So we're going to change our initial soil water just in this simulation, just so you can see how this manager works um, properly. So we'll unlink our initial soil water node. So right click on it and go down to unlink and select unlink this node. And so it's now gone from blue to black. And that means if we change it here, we won't change any of our other simulations. And let's go to specify our soil water profile as being completely full again. Okay, now that we've done that, hit save, select the simulations folder and click run. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our outputs into our graph elements so we can visualize it. So expand out our XY graph node till we get to the AppSim file reader. Click on browse. And then we want to select our no irrigation output, our irrigate on event output, irrigate on date output, irrigate based on rainfall output and irrigate based on soil water deficit output. And then click on the XY graph and turn on our irrigate based on soil water deficit output. You see here our extractable soil water starts a lot higher because we specified it to be full right at the start of the simulation and it tracks along and it mirrors pretty much the change in soil water in our original um, no irrigation simulation till it gets to about here and then you can see lot, a lot of um, small amounts of water being applied to replenish the, so, um, the soil um, based on that soil water deficit at that point in time. So this has been a very quick overview about how the different irrigation managers work. Um, and I hope it's been, been useful for you um, and that you'll be able to use irrigation in your simulations now when you want to. We'll just save our simulations and we'll see you back here for our next training module.